try to keep it brief. Uh, I don't know that you can lock me to the podium now. I do have a PowerPoint slide show. So uh, December 2017, the board authorized uh, funds for us to purchase some much needed equipment, primarily used for brushing, but everything that we do, we make sure it does multiple purposes. So I had originally pulled this together for an October uh, board meeting, but I uh, was called out of town. So I just want to show you a couple of quick pictures of uh, some of the equipment that uh, you folks authorized for us. And then, of course, this presentation has grown a little bit as a result of the Wolsey fire. Can you try to open that little curtain thing? In theory, this will work. Um, I know we have some, there was some media um, divergation of uh, some of the events. So, the inception of the order, our caps and chassis went through a bidding process and ended up with Ford F 550s. Um, actually, none of the firefighters knew we were getting them until the day we went and picked them up, so it was, it was uh, a pretty unique experience. Uh, you'll notice one picture there, you see a stake bed truck, so out of the uh, 550s we made one of them a dump stake bed. Um, the trucks all seat a uh, maximum of five people in patrol configuration, we run four. Uh, they're all four-wheel drive, all have heavy duty winches. Uh, with the increased capability of trucks over our very used F 450s, uh, we had enough size to tanks and other 50 gallons of water for wildland suppression. The pump systems that we built for them are uh, capable of develop developing up to 375 psi, which is ideal for pumping long hose lays up and down hills. Um, everything that we do is going to be dual use. Uh, you'll see some pictures up here shortly for brushing and firefighting. Uh, basically, they're all set up exactly the same. That's a first for us. Uh, once again, uh, prior to this, basically everything we had, we had bought used and piecemeal together. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, one of the patrols is uh, outfitted with a stake bed dump on it. So there's a picture of what, uh, what the grant uh, did for us. Those are, like I said, uh, 550s, uh, light bars with some wonderful off rowing lights. You can see them miles away and they really help with uh, driving on the dirt roads at night. Once again, you can see five people, heavy duty winch, um, baskets on top for carrying your brushing gear, and in a subsequent picture, you'll see how accessible the uh, pump panel is, which in previous trucks, a lot of times you had to climb up in the truck bed to run them. So uh, I they all set exactly the same way. So you can see on the top right picture, or top left picture right there, and it looks, Pointer the truck. Anyway, we uh, can carry four weed whips on top, and so it suits our crew of four going out. Uh, middle picture there, top, uh, shows the radio console. Uh, we also upgraded some more radios out of this, which gives us great communication capability. Uh, front there, you can see the winch. Uh, lower uh, left picture, one of the skid units, and in the middle uh, bottom and middle right, that's uh, the configuration. It's a stake bed. Once again, we can have the pump in and out of there. It takes about an hour to take uh, to put in, about half an hour to take out. So uh, there's, once again, it's our first opportunity to have a real crew configuration right there. So that's what they look like. Um, even our most demure firefighters uh, have no, no problem accessing the pump panel. It's nice and low and easy to get at. And, um, First fire, I think that truck had been out of the shop for maybe a day. Wow. Uh, one of the other pieces of equipment we picked up is this um, uh, brush chipper. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's new enough to be carb compliant, runs uh, diesel, def fluid, all that kind of good stuff, and it's truly a monster. It's given us some, some great production from, from the instant we put it in service. How much did that cost roughly, do you remember? The brush chipper? Yeah. That one there was uh, 75. And so far we haven't been able to jam it up. Okay. <laughs> not for lack of not for lack trying. Of trying. <laughs> You're not trying hard. <laughs> not trying hard. Enough. So um, in the original version of this, this was, this was from our, one of our drones, and uh, it was going to be a little video presentation with the light bars on, all that kind of good stuff. Once again, we lost something in the media translation. And, yes. and 
All right. So, can you at least cue, uh, bring the other footage up? So, as I've mentioned, everything we do is, is dual purpose. Um, on day in, day out basis, we use them to transport crew out to brushing sites and all kinds of maintenance. Yes, sir? Uh, Ken, this might be a good time to good pause that. Time to share with everybody the uh, amount of equip equipment we have. As you mentioned, this is uh, a good uh, brand new buy for us, but some of the used equipment and the uh, fire trucks. Okay, well, start off at the top of the food chain, which is our Type 3 engines, our wildland engine. So, again, all with the exceptional one, we've uh, picked up used in various forms or different uh, agencies over the years. And the Type 3s are is the bread and butter for wildland firefighting. Um, much smaller than the big Type 1s that everybody's used to seeing running around town. Um, a Type 3 engine gives you higher pressures. Once again, that's what we are concerned with in wildland firefighting, so we can drive miles of hose as opposed to 800 or 1,000 feet of hose if you're doing a structure fire. Structure engines are more suited for flowing great volumes of water, and um, our Type 3s are suited for dry, you know, once again, developing pressure, not necessarily volume. So we have uh, eight Type 3s in the agency. We have two uh, water tenders. One is basically a converted construction water tender. It was our first, 1994. Um, get a little long in the tooth these days. And um, the second one would be our Type 2 tactical water tender. Then with, the, with bringing in these Type 6 patrols, once again, that's exactly what they qualify in, in the uh, fire world, type six. Uh, we now have a legitimate secondary strike team. Uh, type three strike team is the primary, secondary will be the type sixes. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, so, um, so basically this is just gonna dovetail into some footage that uh, was collected from various sources, helmet cams, uh, iPhones and all that kind of good stuff during the course of a couple days of the uh, Woolsey fire. It's not necessarily in any kind of contiguous order. And um, if you listen hard, and I'll encourage you not to, you might hear some information. So that's the bunkhouse that Upper Lost Virgin is So some of the, uh, actually before I start this off, some of the other slides that did get lost. So Thursday night, or Thursday, the fire started up at Boeing. Um, they were kind of handling them, it was kind of fighting them. Uh, Thursday evening, things started taking off. Um, region, uh, which is South Ops, started calling me looking for what resources we could give up to the fire. Um, so the first resource I gave up was our Type 2 tactical water tender. It's one of the most important pieces of equipment you have on the fire ground. Uh, without water, the trucks are just big paperweights. Um, so I gave that up uh, early on in the evening and uh, started getting an inkling of what was to come for us. This is my fourth Malibu fire, so it's not my, necessarily my first rodeo. So Region uh, kind of kept after me, yes, you know, asking for more resources. So around uh, Actually, it was around midnight, I gave up the water tender. Around 10 p.m., we started recalling all of our off-duty personnel, people who had just gone off shift, put the call out to any paid call people that could make it in the station, and any of our just straight-up volunteer cadre. We ended up with a total of 53 people. So it was, it was pretty good. They had a very robust response. Um, we ended up a little short on overhead for various reasons that night. And... Um, so around midnight, I gave up the water tender, sent them off, assigned to the fire. Um, around 4 a.m., I gave up two Type 3 engines assigned to the fire. They went out on a, what's called a rainbow strike team, various agencies. There was an OES engine, an engine from somewhere mid-state, and I think two LA County uh, Type 3s. And they, as a Type 3 uh, strike team, actually got sent to Bell Canyon and spent three days there with no relief, uh, running and gunning as it were. So I held on to all the rest of our resources, having a, an inkling or suspicion of what was coming down the pipeline. I think around 5 a.m. I sent um, Rory an email suggesting that nobody go to Ramirez Canyon that day. 
Not planning on the fire to get there, by the way. It was going to be more of a function of the roads were going to be so impacted and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll roll a little bit of footage here. So that I can tell you is Thursday night. <clears throat> that I can tell you is after the fire actually went through the canyon. That's what's known as incipient fire. So a fire got into the building somewhere. And I had already, actually I had just walked out. That's a Type 3 engine in front of the patrol. That's a patrol right there. And they're back up and on, as it says. That's our old water tender trying to put down some wet line, just using side sprays. This is Ramirez Canyon Road. Um, our, our, our primary safety lookout up on uh, Canyon Doom, keeping an eye on the fire while the rest of our resources were in the, can in the Ramirez <laughs> proper. Uh, thermal gelling and uh, foaming the, the structures prior to the fire front arriving. of the wind and the smoke. Charmley Park, we had two patrols there, and, and uh, I, I did neglect to mention the 53 people respond. That was not including the rangers that went out to assist during the course of the event. Okay, so we thermal gelled and foamed and then left the canyon. It's always been our plan. This is the guys working their way back into the canyon right there. It's a front roundabout just as you enter the canyon. You'll see the front gate here momentarily. For those of you who've been there, you'll, I'm sure you'll recognize it. This is about 1.30 in the afternoon, by the way. Got a little dark. Front gate. straight in front of the truck as you can see because he couldn't see too well he started trying to get off road and there's going straight down the driveway charm lane pretty much the same thing uh, they did all the prep work they could on the structures and then just kind of hung out in the parking lot and let the fire burn around So that's about it. There's there's hundreds of more pictures, but I uh, wanted to try to keep it brief for the ports. Um, I know you guys have a lot to, to look at and discuss tonight. So the rest of the timeline kind of went like this. Um, as the sun came up that morning, uh, we had most of my resources, or our resources were there in camp, chomping at the bit to get out the door. 
Uh, the very first request we responded to was um, via the, um, the park rangers. Uh, we, we sent uh, the water tender and two patrols over to uh, Paramount prior to starting to divvy them out to do what they could there. And then um, basically if you drew a 12 mile circle, oddly enough, we were set up at Amundsen, we were set up at Ramirez, and then we were at Paramount but on the way to Charm Lee. Uh, fire actually hit all three locations almost simultaneously. So it got a little hectic there for just a few minutes. Um, the uh, resources at Ramirez, like I said, they pulled out. It's always been our game plan. We went in and prepped, pulled out, went back in. We didn't quite calculate how long it was going to take to get back in. There was way more power lines down than we had ever suspected. So they got back in there, started picking up all the ground fire that you could see. Um, Canyon, as always suspected, did run out of water. Uh, we used our reserve water source that was there as well. Uh, it was probably almost three hours later uh, after I got the report of, hey, the fire's gone through, we picked up most of the ground fire. Can we go, to, you know, where else are we needed? So I pulled the bulk of the resources out, left patrol there to continue picking up and monitoring. And uh, so it was about three hours later, I said, hey, there's fire in the peach house. So. We weren't running back down, but with uh, no water in the canyon, there was really not too much we could do. So, um, at some point, um, the resources that came out of Ramirez uh, went across the street to um, uh, Malibu Creek State Park, did what they could there as well. And basically, it was um, for the 30 hours or so, it was kind of a running and gunning show. So that's about it. Um, once again, I can't thank the board enough for the equipment that you approved last December. Um, it's uh, on a daily basis. Uh, some of the safety features I skipped over trying to get through this for you guys was uh, uh, the new patrols have exhaust brakes on them. So it's really great for going through Canyon roads. You're not overheating the brakes. You're letting the engine do all the stopping. Uh, safety features, uh, hand-free cell phone, obviously, nowadays. Um, one of the biggies, if you're sitting in a seat and the truck senses there's, say there's four people sitting in there and not all four seat belts are on, the radio won't come on. So a lot of neat safety features built in. Once again, um, just the reliability of the new trucks, uh, the new pump systems have all worked out phenomenally. Uh, once again, the chipper so far is, um, so we haven't been able to jam it up. I'm sure the guys will keep trying. We got a lot of tree work ahead of us as, uh, as State parks and national parks. Well, everybody here realizes the fire was just the start of a long, long process. So, is that a diesel engine or gas? That's truck? diesel. Oh, the trucks yeah. are diesel. The, di the trucks are diesel. There's a long-standing uh, tenant that you don't take gasoline to a fire. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and they're all, of course, you know, they're they're so new. They're carb compliant, uh, def fluid, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, the reliability factor is, you know. It's given us a lot of confidence. Uh, the old used trucks, any day that they started was a yes, and when they made it back without being towed in was a so. But at any rate, questions? So yes, do, do we have anything that needed significant repair or, or anything that in the wake of the fire, other than just regular you know, maintenance? You're killing me. <laughs> the, 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 all the new patrols came through completely unscathed. The older water tender that you saw out there um, we had water up at Almondson, but because the power's out, we couldn't refill the tanks. So we were going down to get water downhill. At any rate, fire came across and scorched the hood pretty good. And, but it's, uh, it's, that truck's actually on the way out the door anyway. And as part of the equipment that you approved last December, a new water tender is being built. Uh, probably take delivery of it March or April of next year. Yes, sir. A uh, number of things. One of the comments about repairs, I think we, um, MRCA Fire Division goes out many fires throughout the state. And I think it was last year, so it's a Napa fire or some fire that one of our pieces of equipment broke down. So an engine, yes sir. And, so forth. and as mentioned, these uh, recent purchases was an easy decision for the board uh, because, and the, I'll be well, back. Yes, we hope, to, <laughs> we hope to do because 
I can remember, and it was even before that, but I can remember us buying a used uh, type, I can't remember, fire trucks in San Diego. Very used. Those would have been, they were so old that they would have been classed as type one engines when they were new in 1969. But then, of course, they you know, kept getting downgraded, 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 and uh, basically used them as type threes. So, so you can see uh, how talented our fire division and the ranger division uh, is when they can utilize old equipment and keep it running and, and, and so forth in order to protect our resources. And the last comment, uh, he talked about the Route 53 and the fire division fighting group. Uh, then they mentioned we have the Rangers, and that's one of the advantages of the MRCA uh, organization. Um, you heard in my report earlier about swift water training. Our Rangers and Fire uh, Division employees are all cross-trained and capable of supporting each other's division. And you don't see that capability and collaboration in uh, many Team MRCA. MRCA is unique and, and we're very blessed. And thank you, Ken, for all that you do and keeping us together and keeping it uh, working to protect uh, our resources. You're quite welcome. It's a truly a labor of love. And I, I did forget the one big, huge, I can't, I can't believe I glossed over. Not even a hangnail out of, out of the whole incident for us. Um, no paper cuts, no splinters. <laughs> so it worked out really well. I need to pass along greetings uh, from Ted Smith. All right. I was talking to the MF. He asked about the MRCA and the fires and our losses and so forth. And well, I certainly hope he's enjoying retirement. <laughs> well, Ted was.